What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overlord here. So this would be the spoiler free review for Talk To Me, something I'm sure a lot of you probably have been waiting for from me. Some of you even messaged me asking me if I had seen Talk To Me. I had a chance to see Talk To Me many weeks ago. I just didn't have a, well, timetable wise, it just wasn't working for me to be able to attend those early screenings, but I've seen it now and I did enjoy it. I will say that just to get that out of the way. So Talk To Me is directed by Raka Raka, for those of you familiar with that YouTube channel. It's also co-written by one half of Raka Raka, along with Bill Hensman. It is starring Sophie Wilde, Alexandra Jensen, Joe Bird, Zoe Tarix, Miranda Otto, and several other individuals I just don't care to mention right now. This film is revolving around a group of friends who discover how to conjure spirits using an embalmed hand. They become hooked on the new thrill until one of them goes too far and unleashes terrifying supernatural forces. Now that one in question is our main character of Mia. So Talk To Me is one of the most unsettling movies I've seen this year, probably the most disturbing I've seen this year. And it's elevated mostly due to Raka Raka's near perfect direction and everything else that comes comes along with that. Sophie Wilde's captivating performance, the sound design, the mixing, sense of dread that is always present, plus so much more. I wouldn't go as far as saying this is very scary which isn't to say it's not scary at all because of course dealing with possession is 100 scary and there are some effective sequences in here that will elicit fear in you but i would say i've seen things that have made me feel a lot more terrified this one just kind of made me feel feel very sad for our characters i was very interested in mia's arc completely and it's just very uncomfortable so talk to me's greatest achievement is blending several horror tropes that you've already seen countless times before but serving them up from a unique perspective that somehow makes it fresh and still familiar you again have seen countless horror projects like this when it comes to the subject matter most notable one that came to mind while watching this and i've seen so many other people talk about it is clearly hereditary since our main protagonist is struggling to accept the truth about her mother's suicide and is still in the process of grieving which immediately makes mia a protagonist you can care for and grow invested in since you're hoping she can overcome this and move forward with her life on top of that the other nod to hereditary here involves some head crushing moments which if you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking about i was like oh look at them hitting the hitting the um uh, alex wolf so unlike projects that have innocent people targeted by evil entities talk to me is one of those films where the evil that feeds on mia's grief is present because of mia's unfortunate decision making so it didn't just fall in her lap like you see in some other possession films mia is very depressed she wants to escape her feelings of isolation she has a rocky relationship with her father and only seems to open up to her friend jade jade's mother and younger brother jade's younger brother named riley based on what's on screen it is safe to assume that she is she isn't cleaning up the wrecks in her own house since her dad opens up wounds that are still healing, but she takes time to ignore that and cope with the loss of her mother in this way by creating a falsehood of what her family actually is and that that's not working out for her talk to me is a bone chilling look at the dangers of us holding on to the past too tightly that's primarily what it is at the center of this mystery as mentioned in the synopsis or the brief, brief plot description i mentioned earlier at the center of this mystery that's unraveling is an embalmed hand that belonged to either a medium or a Satanist is even possible as they mentioned. And rather than exposition dumping itself into a not so terrifying concept by the end of it all, talk to me lest the mystery remain a mystery. This enhances the mystique of that hand while avoiding unsatisfying explanations that could jeopardize that. Sure, the writing leaves a few unanswered questions, but these can be answered based on evidence the film provides. So it's being left up to the viewer's interpretation and whatever the interpretation is, it's backed up by subtle clues and hints sprinkled throughout the film talk to me isn't interested in treating its audience like a fool it's determined to grip you early on which it will do and it allows you to solve the puzzle yourself you're in the same position as these characters for a lot of the runtime jade and the rest of me as friends are likable and fleshed out enough for me to say okay i i like you i find you interesting but Haley and joss they were pretty flat to me if nothing else, outside of just that, still talking about writing, Talk To Me succeeds at highlighting the dangers of peer pressure, Gen Z's desensitization to risky stunts for internet fame, and telling a gripping story that, that creating false realities to cope with grief just isn't the answer. The balance between humor and terror is near perfect or I actually will go and say perfect, mostly because the jokes are kept at minimum and doesn't lessen the tension when they're present. 
Uh, Miranda Otto stars as Sue, who is Jade's mother, and she is the best comic relief while also being one of the most realistic depictions of a Gen Z parent that has that has their head on straight, I would say. Can't really recall too much CG being present here. I think a lot of it was practical and it was effectively eerie and discomforting all the way through. Not too overly relying on jump scares either, but very relying on imagery that just makes your skin crawl and an atmosphere that just constantly feels haunting. Sophie Wilde blew me away with her performance. Everyone else is coming and bringing their A-game, but Sophie... She's just on another level. She's very mesmerizing. There are times where I just wanted to hug Mia because she's so broken. And Sophie expresses this sorrow deep within inside her so profoundly that it's really hard not to feel sorry for, for the character of Mia. She's so broken. She's clinging for any bit of happiness she can find. We see this when she scrolls through her camera looking at old footage of her mother. It's a standout performance of the year for me. I do want to commend the cinematography since the possession scenes do feel very original thanks to the camera work and the opening scene. Also, one of the best sequences I've seen in a horror film this year is just one continuous take with subjects just coming in and out of the frame. Raka Raka, they have delivered something very special here. It's not overly original, like I've been seeing people say, but it's the way they have executed it. Like I always also stated in my other videos, execution is everything, and this is something that was ex executed to near perfection. I'm going to have to give Talk To Me a 8 out of 10. I especially also dug the pacing. I was engaged the entire time. That pacing was flawless, simply flawless. 8 out of 10 for Talk To Me. Let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications, in this video in the description i have links to my social media accounts i'm on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me know any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video